Mopping up, the champions sense an easy victory until the hidden mages enter the scene. Evening the odds, Karenina slung spells while Piper's mysterious necklace took over her body to get in a shot of its own. With might and magic on their side, any worry the party had quickly evaporated as Craig took care of one and Gravity the other. With their foes vanquished, the rest of the grotto remains to be explored. Can we investigate the bodies? Uh, yes, you can loot the bodies. In fact, there's things on the bodies. Yeah. I would love to look at the uh, body of the Null uh, um, Shaman that I utterly destroyed. Uh, yeah, so there's not much going on in the facial region anymore. <laughs> Uh, there, there's not a lot on her. You find, like, pouches with some dried herbs. You find some, uh, like, medallions that have some weird things etched in them. I'm taking it. Then on her belt... Okay, they're all sewn into her shawl, shawl so you're now wearing a very jangly shawl. Okay, if it, um, that'd be too much. <laughs> I mean, that would definitely be a look, Craig. A loincloth could, and a could, jake... Could you pull one? You could rip one you, off. You can start ripping them off, yeah. They don't do anything. They just, um... They're kind of... You feel like they have some kind of significance, but you wouldn't know how to work it. Okay, no, that's that's fine. Uh, what is it called but for my, uh... It's inventory? just a medallion. Noel just medallion. Noel medallion. Uh, but the, the thing that really catches your attention, or thing that should catch your attention, I don't know if it does for Craig... Uh, but there is a very pretty knife sheathed to her belt. Yunk. The sacrificial dagger. So you, uh, you take this dagger, uh, and it has this curled hilt, and the pommel looks like the head of a viper. And as you pull the blade out of its sheath, the blade itself is black. And it seems wet. Ew. I think I know what it is. Oh. So do I. The ritual dagger. Uh, I feel it's a little... Poisonous bat dagger. It is most definitely a poisonous dagger. This is a plus one dagger. It does 1d4 plus one plus your dex or whatever, uh, as far as slashing is concerned or piercing is concerned. But it always does an additional 2d6 poison damage. The poisonous ritual dagger... You know, in case your sacrifice isn't dead enough. Yeah, it's insurance. It's like everlasting poison or something. Craig has that? Yeah. Craig just pulled that off the corpse, yep. Karenina is just like standing by watching this happen because she has no need for your material. It's a magical weapon. So what about what about that elf, the, uh, the drow? Drow mage? What's left of her... You, you don't find much on her. You find a uh, a ring with a black onyx stone cut into an interesting geometrical pattern on her finger. And Karenina, you would recognize this as an arcane focus. This is what she would use to cast her spells. Okay. Uh, you see her spell book attached to her hip, which as a wizard, you know that that is filled with all the knowledge of the spells that she has. Oh, I would I would enjoy flipping through it to see if there's anything I don't have and copying it, but I don't need to keep it. I mean, you could turn it into like the library later. I will return that to His Majesty's treasury. Yeah, how much you think? How much you think that ring can be worth? Uh, the ring probably worth like fifty gold. Yeah, we'll snatch that shit. And around <laughs> her neck, you see a pendant. Uh, it's a black pendant with a silver spider, it's just a perfectly circular pendant, the silver spider, each of the legs is touching the edge of the circle, mm. and in the thorax, you see carved out in the blackness, two interlocking circles. So we take anything else other than the, the ring, the necklace, the spell book? Uh, not on her. Okay. Uh, the elite? The elite. Yeah, what about on this this other guy? He has a pair of short swords. She ha- uh, He has a short bow. He's got some arrows. He was wearing studded leather. And he had a shield. Uh, he also has... Uh, among all of them, you are going to find 30 gold pieces. Cool. Okay, that I can write down. 30 gold. Okay. 
And you guys are still at the opening of the tunnel. You haven't gone all the way in yet. You've only gone partway through this dungeon. Do we want to go backwards for a hot second and just see what... We can check that on the way out, because that's our... As far as we know, that's our way out. Okay. I mean, I have two, I have two ways out at that point. This is true, you do. Hmm. Down the tunnel first? Alright. So as you go down the tunnel, it's only about a 30-foot tunnel. And it opens up. You see this wide cave, almost, that's lit decently with torches and candles. There's a couple tables and what looks like a bar behind which there are a few different uh, bottles of varying sizes and opacities. <laughs> There's some cups and you actually see a knocked over table and spilled drink. And you get the feeling that may have been where the guy who came out of there was drinking the first time. Uh, but there's also a continuation of the tunnel across the way. Okay. I guess we can start going down there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. And as you go through that tunnel, you feel that it slopes down slightly, as if it's going deeper in. Deep into the earth. Not that deep, but still, like, it's going deeper into the earth. And it opens up into a room lit with these strange green lamps. They're hanging on the wall. They flicker like fire, but they're not hot to the touch, and they are glowing green. Do I know what they are? Um, make an arcana check. Uh, I rolled a 16. The room is fairly wide. It's probably about 50 feet wide, probably about 40 feet long. There's a rusted cage in one uh, corner, large enough to hold several medium-sized creatures. And in the center of this room, there is a table. On that table is a map and several knocked over figures. And Sarah, with that roll, you do know that they are probably lit by a continual flame spell. So it's magic that imitates fire will never go out and somehow they are altered to have green light instead of white. Okay. How many of them are there? Uh, 15, 20, something like that. They're, they're bolted to the walls. Ah. It's not a headquarters that's meant to, like, you know, fold up and go. This was supposed to be a more permanent location for at least a while. Gotcha. gotcha. I'll look at the map. Oh. Uh, it is a map of the Mace region. And you do see Mace, the city. Uh, you see the lake. You see where you are currently located in the general area. There is a flag posted and you recognize, oh, that's where I am. And then you see that there are pathways leading into the north. There is a... Um, a few different, like, note, there are marks in it. There's no figure places, but there's marks in the map in, in different locations in the mountains. And you see a structure north of Mace that's smaller, but it is, uh, it seems to be strategically placed between the roughest part of the mountains and Mace itself. Uh, and you said there's figures on it? There were figures, but they seem to have been knocked over. Oh, uh, is that a way I could like figure out where to replace that or uh, make an intelligence check? Uh, twenty modified. You move the pieces around. You get the feeling. Okay, we know that this army was in or coming around the lake. They we're guessing that this is where we are here. And then you kind of left with these other figures and the north, and you're like, there's there's too many holes and not enough figures, so you're not quite sure where everything's located, but you get the feeling they're building an army in the north. And with the number of figures, it's pretty big. Then I'm going to turn to Karenina and ask, is there any chance this structure is yours? Oh, yes, that uh, that looks like it's Fort Black Dove. Yes, that's one of ours. Looking at this army that Jeltor has restored, is that the direction that they've been sending people? Uh, they have been sending gnolls northward, and there was talk about them being involved with the orcs, going to speak to the orcs of the north. So you get the feeling that some of the figures that he's holding either represent orcish tribes or gnoll parties. You're not sure how many of which. Have you received word from that fort? Uh, no, I don't believe there's anyone there currently. I don't... I would have to check some of the records, but I don't believe that's been active for, um, for a little while. What you would know is that the fort was built specifically to keep the orc invaders from the north from being a problem. 
after the war between the dwarves and the orcs about a hundred years passed, the, uh, there were some humans that decided to get involved and help. And Mace's city was one of those, uh, this is actually how Mace became the ma massive city that it was. It helped push back the orc invasion and crush them. So the orcs that were a thriving society prior to this were broken down into their tribal units again, and the fort was no longer necessary because it was just roving bands at that point. Karenina is going to, like, very authoritatively kind of be like, well, of course, we're taking this, I'm taking this map back to his majesty. It's, uh, you know, we'll make some note, I'll make some notations here of where we think some of the, the pieces were, but this is clearly, this is clearly state intelligence that I need to return to to his highness. That would probably be where it would be the most useful. Uh, yeah. Yes. I just want to make sure I remember where everything was. That's all. You're certainly welcome to take any notes you need or make a copy if you like, a quick sketch here, but, um... I will but, but, jot it down in my journal. Yes, but, but of course, of course, the main copy is coming back with me to his highness. And there's, you know, there's no question about that in her voice. I am so glad that Piper doesn't have pupils because Katarina cannot see her roll her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kethra is going to eventually wander back in. She's like fixing her armor, no longer in bear form. Bear form or bear form? Oh, both. <laughs> <laughs> B A R E. That was good. <laughs> yes, mm, Kathra. Thank you very much for your assistance. I, You're okay. I appreciate it, and I shall, I shall uh, communicate to His Majesty of your your effectiveness once again. Appreciate it. As this happens, Craig, the whole bear thing is just like he's just up on her, just like staring with like think of those doe eyes of just like oh my god. You're like, starstruck by her. Kind of, yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna straight up ask her. So that so where bear thing? Yeah, yeah. I was uh born this way. Uh, so can you like infect other people with that? Uh, I can, but note the word you used. <laughs> infect. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. I'm saying I don't. Oh, because the word I use. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. What if they want to? I don't. There's very few people I would trust with this kind of power, and, uh... What about the guy currently hugging your leg? Hey, I'm not hugging. I'm just super He's awkwardly, now... uncomfortably close. There's a difference. Hugging your leg. <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'd be giving him the, uh... No, no offense, little one, but, uh... Last thing we need is a super-powered cub running about. So, is there anything else here? Uh, there's a few bedrolls, but other than that, not much. Any more doorways in here? Only thing of note no is the doors. map. The map is the only thing of note, and when they heard the kerfuffle, they messed it up so you couldn't, at least you couldn't get the perfect outline of what they were doing. I got some of it. You got some of it. I'm going to kind of uh, bring up to, uh, I guess, the people that would know more about this, and I, because... Andrew knows it's a dagger of poison stuff. He just found a really cool dagger. That's all he really knows. And he's kind of going to be like, I found this. Uh, can I take a look at it? Yeah, you can. Sure. What would it What would it be? Well, you can tell that it is a weapon and it's constantly wet and it is definitely oh. magical in some nature. The blade is constantly wet at the very least. Oh, I, I know. Uh, just anything that's constantly wet is gross. <laughs> tell that to the gentleman. Anyway. Is there a roll I can make? Uh, to identify it, that's actually a spell. You'd have to take time with it in order to figure out what it is exactly. But viper head, uh, wet blade, sounds like poison. Yeah, it definitely sounds like poison. You can tell that the moisture on the blade is probably poisonous. Okay, that's that's what I was trying to identify. Yeah, that's what I meant. No, you can you can tell that this is a poisonous dagger, and it's magically right. imbued to always have poison on the blade. Yeah, so it just wipe the poison off. What happened? Interesting. It. Remoistens, it recoats itself. Ugh. No, all right, hold on. So does it does a does it well up in beads from the blade? Does it run in a trickle down the down from the hilt? Does it just slowly and uniformly sheen? 
Give me some physics here. It's, it's not like it's beating, but it seems to like be oozing out of pores that don't exist. Okay. You can't see it, pores, but you do see it just kind of like coming out of the whole blade itself. Okay. It's like in a nice uniform mist. In a nice uniform way, yeah. That was what I needed to know. It's the da- it's the dagger form of a really sweaty guy. <laughs> I don't think you're going to need this, Craig. And I'm going to put it back in the sheath. And I'm going to hold on to it. Okay, I trust you, Scratch. Jeltor. Hmm? What's that? Uh, you, you stick with range? Preferably. I'll hold on to it then. I mean, it might be useful if he gets into, like, close combat. If range isn't a possibility. Rapier, silver dagger, normal dagger. That's fair. Could we extract poison from the blade? That's no. I was curious. Okay. All right. Okay, so... So, yeah, I'm gonna just put this away. Yeah, so we're done here. Seems that's right. Continuing on? I, I think, yeah, uh, it's on our way out. Well, no, wasn't there, um... Wasn't there another no tunnel? Doors. He said there's no more tunnel. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, the only thing left in this room is a cage, and if you inspect it, you can tell that they use this to hold prisoners slash food. Well, all right then. I don't need to spend any more time in this uh, dump. All right, and Craig starts climbing back up the wall through the hole. All right, so you guys start heading out. Do you go out the top, or you do, do you go through the other two rooms that you didn't go through on the way out? May as well check the other two. I think we can exit through the front. I think we can take the front door. As Craig is about to start climbing, he goes, oh, and just climbs back down. All right, so. Front door, Craig. When you go through the the way you came in through the through the roof, you go through the door that the the hallway that leads through there. Mm -hmm. uh, You find that outpost where it's like a table. There's some cards on the table, like they may have played a game at some point, but. When you looked in, they weren't really doing that. They were vigilant. And there's a table, a couple chairs, and a door leading out, which you can easily open from this side. Yeah. And then you see an open door across from you, which is where the armory was, and there are some tracks in the dirt, knoll tracks leading away. (laughs) Uh, The armory doesn't really have much of anything important. There are pieces of plate mail on the ground. Oh, we saw that. I mean, any bit of metal helps our friend who works the forge. Yeah, but plate mail is also expensive. So that so too. There, there are pieces of it. There's not like a whole suit. Yeah, I mean, he could melt it down and make something. If plate mail sells for 1,500 gold pieces, it's shit, they gotta be worth something. Even like a gold at that point. All right. All right, well, you can keep haggling over whether or not to take the garbage with you. I'm continuing. Fine, go on. I mean, is it bad armor? It's not the best. Um, I mean, resources still. It could yeah. it could be melted down, yes, and made into other things. So you guys collect the uh, the metal, the scrap mm-hmm. metal, because that's really what it is at this point. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what we're turning into, yeah. <gasps> and you head out of the, the cave, and... Night has fallen at this point, so it's fairly dark, but with Kethra leading the way and with Scratch and Craig being able to track as well as they can, you could probably get back to the city by the wee hours of the morning if you wanted to push through the night. Yeah, I don't want to be in here any longer. Yeah, probably safer. You, you aren't accosted. You, uh, you make it back to the road, and Kethra leads you back to the city. And I think the most annoying part of the journey is when you get to the North Gate and realize, ah, oh, that's right, it's closed. Hey, hey, Karina. Karenina. Oh, whatever. Do you know why this... Rude. <laughs> no, that's funny. No, leave it in, leave it in. Do you know why this gate is under construction and not operable? Oh, you know, infrastructure projects, bureaucracy, that sort of thing. Hmm. That's not, that's a little bit below me. How about the guards? Uh, there are no guards outside because there's no throughway. There are guards uh, patrolling the, the roof, but, like, the, uh, the wall, but they're not down here on ground level. 
Can they see us coming? Yeah, they can see you. They're not doing anything about you, but they see you. What's a ladder or something? Else? I mean, it's fine. It's near where the Whispering Wood is anyway. Yep, and you uh, you do walk around. Uh, you do. Let's go. You have to uh, go through. You see the oh, two. Oh, where's my trap. dog, by the way? Oh, he's he's loyally nearby. You could you could okay. have been riding him. This I'm whole riding time. him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm riding the dog. Absolutely. And uh, you you pass by the two headed trout. You uh, head to the the main gates. You show your passes. Karenina, you have like a medallion that you don't need. You're a citizen. You don't need to pay any tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go through and you end up in the... uh, Does Kethra come with us into the city or is she like... Actually, I was about to say, as you guys are about to go into the market district, Kethra's just kind of like, all right, well, um, I hope uh, hope you all make it back safe. Enjoy. I'm going to head back now. Uh, Just give your report and if you have any more need of me, you know the general whereabouts of where to find me. Um, I don't know what those elves were doing with the gnolls. I don't know why anyone would be working with them. I, I guess to get the orcs on their side, but why they're working with gnolls is beyond me. Uh, it, it War. Make sure that uh, my concerns at the fact that they're stooping as low as they are make it to the king's ears. Uh, I, I have a bad feeling about this. Well, naturally, Gathering yes, everyone but, um... and anyone. But yes, uh, p- do do keep your sharp eyes and ears open and and uh, inform uh, his majesty if you he- gather any other information. The, uh, the, uh, the crown will hear from me. Abs- well, thank you. A, a, yes. A pleasure, a pleasure as always, Kathra. Of course, Karenina. Thank you so much for your help. You're welcome. Uh, keep the cub idea in mind. <laughs> Pretty much Craig's I just like, won't. you're awesome. Thank you. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it's, I'm not one for urban area, so I'll be heading out now. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Travel safely. Take care. Yeah, Karenina is like not even, she's not going through the pleasure. Like she's just like yep. going into the city. <laughs> uh, and uh, Kethra is going to just kind of fall back a little bit. And uh, anyone who would like, you can make a uh, insight check on her. Uh, sure. 22. 22. 20. 20. 20. Uh, my insight is... Haha, ha, 13. She does feel discomfort about the city, but... Those of you that rolled higher than a 20, or 20 or higher... Mm-hmm. You see her eyes flick to the castle real quick, and then away before she kind of shuffles off. Hmm... Do, do you know if she has any history with the castle? Who? Kethra. Oh yes, of course. She, uh, she, she was uh, friends with the prince as a as a child, and uh, I imagine she's uh, she's not ready to return. Hmm. I wonder if she knows how he's doing. Well, I suppose if she wanted to know, she has her means of finding out, does she not? I suppose. So to make a report? Uh, naturally, yes. All right, so you guys make your way through the city. It's fairly easy. It's very early in the morning. It's probably like 4, 4.30. The sun is only just beginning to peek across the lake as you make it to the castle district. The guards at the front recognize Karenina, and they will bring you through the hedge maze easily. Karenina, you could probably get through on your own, but thinking about this is beneath you, so let them lead the way. And you get to a front hall where you are asked to wait while the king is roused and makes his preparations. But you have time to clean up, get yourself freshened up while... So it's probably like 5.15, 5.30 in the morning by the time he actually sees you. So you have... You have time to clean up and everything. And you live at the castle. Well, you have a space at the castle. You live in, you have a home outside the castle, but you don't frequent it much. I have chambers. You have chambers here that you can use. When Karenna comes back, she's in a totally different outfit. <laughs> and the rest of you are given a space to clean the dust from the road off yourselves, if not 
get a full morning makeover like Karenina has. Craig is completely covered in blood, and then they force him to at least take a quick wipe before uh, we see a the A wipe game. down. A pair of chambermaids with, like, mops and a bucket just a- <laughs> jamming you into a corner, like, trying to- Close this one off. <laughs> it's like that scene in Rambo where they have him against the wall and they're spraying him with the hose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that sounds about right. Yep, uh, and then you're all cleaned up and ready for the king. And as you enter the room, the, the throne room, King Sarath is sitting poised. He looks as though he's been woken from his sleep, but he isn't <laughs> He isn't tousled. He isn't, you know, he's not unkempt. It's just, it's all visible in the eyes. And he goes... He hasn't had coffee. He hasn't had his coffee yet, no. And he kind of looks and goes, Welcome back. I uh, see you were very pragmatic about your mission. I appreciate that. What have you to report? Uh, we met up with Kethra, as you instructed, and she uh, informed us about the uh, gnolls who are, uh, it seems to be uh, exterminated as, as well as we can find in the caves up there. We, we took care of the lot of them. Um, there was a drow mage working with them, and we have returned with, uh, with their military plans, their map, and it seems that there is some sort of movement and communication with the northern forces. Uh, quite a lot of them, it looks like. Mm. So, and then I, I bring up the, the map and, and, you know, go over all of the, the stuff. That the king on. will uh, snap his fingers and Korth will approach. And you, as you're explaining the map, Korth is making notes and the king tells him, take that to the war room, lay it out exactly as she has described. So Korth will nod to the king, and he will take the map and the figures and his notes and any notes you offer up, and he will take that off to the war room. Ah, <sighs> so Drow manipulating gnolls into a collaboration with orcs. Seems we're going to be attacked on both fronts. It would certainly seem that. Oh, yeah. I believe it is now time that we wage our own type of war, Karenina. Oh? Oh, yes, the one where we do our best work. We are going to need... Her, her face lights up. She knows exactly what he means. We're going to need our forces fed and ready, which means we're going to need funding. Karenina, mm. I wish for you to... Get the rest you need, but prepare for a ball this evening. Invite the wealthiest of our citizenry and see if we can't uh, start a war fight. A, a ball, your, hi your highness, a ball? Or perhaps a, a smaller, more intimate dinner with some diplomats? Or uh, But you can see on her face she's hoping he says ball. Uh, whatever you feel would get the most uh, open coffers. I believe that gala you threw a few years back did wonders for our infrastructure. Oh, and to throw it... Brian, did you say for tonight? For uh, tonight. Well, keep in mind, it's like 5.30 in the morning. No, 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 I know. You no, have no, a I day. Sure. Let's fucking like, do this. I have 12 hours. You got 12 hours. <laughs> make me a ball. Make me a gala. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, so she, like, you can see, like, a little, like, a little glimmer in her eyes, but she clasps her hands together and gives that little bow. Of course, your majesty. It shall be done. Thank you. The rest of you, there have been... There's a suite available for you to get your rest. You are, of course, invited and expected to attend as the heroes you are. I believe your presence will do a great deal to get people excited to spend their money protecting their city. But you all of us need to show up. You're all invited and expected. He's being polite about ordering us to He's be being there. polite about telling you your ass is <laughs> Yeah, I know, there. I know. Don't talk catches on. Damn it. And Karenina, if they require any sort of grooming or decorations yeah. with their uh -huh. outfits, you know which seamstresses are available. Uh -huh. If they require assistance, it shall be provided to... My highest standards, your majesty. Very good. And you, you, you have my full support. Uh, can I look at the king and be like, 
Is it okay if I come in a shirt and pants? Wait, as opposed to what? <laughs> not 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 in fancy. It's a shirt and pants. That, that's oh, cool, right. We have to make sure that you represent the ideal. So we'll make it. Uh, if you aren't comfortable being fully garbed, though, to be fair, your reputation as the dragon slayer will give you more of a rugged look. Maybe a fine tunic and buckskin pants, something like that, rather than. Your, your Majesty, this is. Don't worry. This sort of this sort of concern is beneath you. I shall take care of this. Well, just don't wrap him in silk. We want to make sure he sells his roll. Oh, of course, Your Majesty. I just have one question, if I may. Of course. Um, is it rude to ask to bring a plus one? It uh, entirely depends on the plus one that you're intending to bring. Uh, the excellent blacksmith at the Ringing Hammer. A man who would probably be doing quite a bit of work on creating weapons and whatnot. Yes, he would definitely be a good face to bring. Bring him along as well. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Now, if uh, uh, you, there's no further questions, I leave you all in the capable hands of Karenina. You can show them where the guest suite is and get your rest, get your uh, selves prepared, and... I will see you all this evening. Food will be sent to your room. Thank you very much, Your Majesty. I shall see you later this afternoon. Good morning, all. And, we, and, and does the bow and walks slightly backwards and, and bustles everyone out. Yep. Once you're all out of the room, the doors close, you get led to the suite. And it is a suite, so as you enter, um, there's a grand like sitting area there's a uh, food laid out on a banquet table apparently they got orders to quickly l put out a spread uh, there's a fireplace it's not lit there's uh, several chairs and there are four doors that lead off into grand bedrooms four post beds a trunk that's empty at the foot of your bed a dresser a vanity and two of the rooms have windows leading out so you can see outside so when we when we get there, I, I turn to the group and I say, well, there's a lot of work I need to attend to. And I am actually a bit tired. So I will leave you here to your suite. Get your rest. Uh, freshen yourself up as you see fit. And I will come later this afternoon to uh, correct it. You, do, you just see Craig go, okay, not having any idea what he's in the store for in a couple hours. Basically, yeah. Um, but she says all this, she opens the suite, gestures you in, turns, and she's gone. Yep. So you guys, after your long venture out into the wilderness, now have probably, for all of you, the nicest accommodations you have ever had in your life. This has been the Reliably Chaotic Podcast. Champions of Solane is an original Dungeons & Dragons adventure written by Brian Scharf using the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set published by Wizards of the Coast. My name is Brian Scharf, and I've been your DM. You can reach me at ReliableDM on Twitter. My name is Nicole Summers, and I play Piper. And this is Jair, also known as JJ, and I play the character of Jalto Ejectus. This is Matthew Reed. And I play Scratch. This is Andrew Brown, and I play Craig. This is Sarah, and I performed the role of Vizier Karenina Mabnar. Theme music by Adrian Von Ziegler. All other music by Kevin McLeod on the Incompetech website and Adrian Von Ziegler. Detailed information about music in this episode is provided in its description. Music for this episode was selected by Nicole Summers. The episode was edited by Matthew Reed with assistance from Sarah. Contact us on Twitter at ReliablyChaotic, email us at ReliablyChaotic at gmail.com, or join our Discord server by following the link in our description. If you like our show and would like to support us, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com slash ReliablyChaotic, or by leaving a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It really does help a lot. Thank you for listening. 
and we hope to see you again in our next adventure.